Now at 5.30, a Laurel County shooting seriously injured two people this morning. We'll have the latest on the investigation and a live report from UK Hospital where the victims were taken. Also on WKYT this morning, a Nicholasville man suspected of robbing two Lexington banks was caught in Georgia. We'll have the latest on the cases. And we have a winter storm watch in effect starting tomorrow off into Thursday. On top of that, a flood watch. I mean, we're looking for extreme amounts of rain, snow, and ice. I'll show you the latest forecast coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's so nice to have you with us. Tuesday on WKYT as we get this day off and rolling. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Today is a first alert severe weather day. We're tracking rain moving across the state, which could lead to flooding. Let's go to Micah Harris now with a look at how this rain could cause these issues. Yeah, we have a bit of a light mix this morning, and it's really trying to kick on out of here. It's past I-75 at this moment and traveling towards, say, Moorhead and then work your way into Fleming County. Now, a look across the state, there's not much going on except for that very light mix. I haven't heard of reports uh, out of anybody, so there's some good news there. 30 degrees in Georgetown, 31 in Lexington. And go through the next 24 hours. Here's the breakdown. Through the day, you'll have on and off. You'll have a chance at least. It's some very light rain. It's not much through the day. It's really for me, it's all about the temperatures. I mean, you'll get those gusty winds coming in here and bumping our temperatures up to the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. Now, tonight and into tomorrow morning, that's when that heaviest rain comes flying on in here. I mean, we're looking at possible flooding potential, too. Now, I'll show you that and talk all about that, and what's after that is what you want to know about, and I'll show you all that coming up. All right, Michael, we'll see you in just a bit, and so people who live near flood-prone creeks and streams will be keeping a very close eye on water levels today and in the next couple of days. Heavy rain on top of melting snow from la the last winter storm we experienced could be causing some problems. Folks who live near Stoner Creek in Bourbon County tell us they're already taking precautions. Members of a motorcycle club located near the creek say it doesn't take too much rain to flood the club. Members say they have their fingers crossed that they won't have to pack up. We've got a tractor trailer body standing by. We've got quite a few bikes on the property that we will worry about flooding out. According to the National Weather Service, yesterday marked the 18th anniversary of the biggest flood in Stoner Creek's history. On that day, water levels are measured at 30 feet, which is 16 feet above average. Some schools are still not having classes because of the winter weather, but even during snow days, a principal in Clay County has found a way to help his students. Last week, Goose Rock Elementary School principal William Sexton, along with Family Resource Center staff members, delivered water and food to students and their families. Sexton says those families were grateful to see him. Just wanted to do something to be able to, to give back and, and let them know that, you know, they not only see us here in the educational setting, but we're a part of the community. Sexton also says road crews cleared the snow off of the roads for them so that they could make those deliveries. Laurel County leaders say they're using lessons learned from past severe weather events to help them prepare for the future. Just over three years ago, a tornado killed six people in Laurel County. The East Bernstadt area was hit hard. Laurel County's emergency management director there calls March 2nd, 2012 a nightmare. But he says county leaders learned some valuable lessons. We put more plans in place. We've, uh, we've built uh, relations with uh, with more mutual aid agreements, but I feel today we're more prepared today probably than we were then. Well, many of the homes in East Bernstadt were damaged or destroyed by the tornado and have since been rebuilt. Classes at Scott County Middle School have been canceled today because of a heating problem there. All other Scott County schools will be open today, again, except the middle school. Clay, Harlan, Jackson, and Leslie County schools are all closed today because of weather. And for a full list of closings and delays, you can go to our website, WKYT.com. New this morning, we're tracking the investigation into a Laurel County shooting that sent two people to the hospital overnight. Police say they're still sorting through information on what led up to the shooting. WKYT's Sean Moody is live at UK Hospital where the victims are being treated. Sean, good morning. 
Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Details about what led to this shooting are still unclear. Investigators say it happened during an altercation between a woman who lives at the home and people who were outside. A spokesperson for the Laurel County Sheriff's Office said Pamela Newcomb and Ricky Eddie Eversoll were both flown here to UK Hospital. They say the incident happened shortly after 8 o'clock last night at Newcomb's home in East Bernstadt. They said this began as some kind of an altercation between Newcomb and Eversoll, who they say may have been one of two people outside the home. They say it's some point gunfire was exchanged and Newcomb was hit in the stomach and Eversol was hit in the shoulder. Emergency crews flew Newcomb here to UK Hospital. Investigators say Eversol showed up at Somerset Hospital later with a gunshot wound. He was then flown here to UK Hospital. Investigators say both of them have serious injuries. Now again, the investigators said the circumstances that led to the altercation and shooting aren't clear yet. That's something they're still looking into. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you so much. 535 now on WKYT this morning, and a Nicholasville man wanted for robbing two Lexington banks has been arrested all the way down in Georgia. Police say Cody Arnett is behind the robbery of two banks last year. WKYT's Mark Barber is live in Lexington with more on this investigation. Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning, Rebecca and Bill. Investigators say that the 29 year old Nicholasville man robbed two banks in Lexington and then disappeared after escaping from police in a high speed chase. Investigators say that the search for Cody Arnett began on December 16th after police say he robbed the United Bank on Harrodsburg Road. A description of the backpack that police say he carried the money in also tied him to a robbery that happened at the People's Exchange Bank on Clays Mill Road a few weeks earlier. Detectives tell us when they started receiving anonymous tips that Arnett was a bank robber. They tracked him to his home in Nicholasville. Investigators say they determined that the red truck he drove was spotted at one of the banks when it was robbed. Police tell us officers were on their way to his house when they saw the 29 year old driving on Harrodsburg Road. We're told them they tried to stop him near United Bank. A passenger got out of the truck and then Alton sped off. Police say the 29 year old led them on a high speed chase at more than 90 miles per hour, driving into oncoming traffic and blowing through a red light, nearly crashing into another car. Officers say they decided to give up the chase because it had become dangerous for other drivers. Investigators tell us that they searched Arnett's home on Alta Avenue and found clothes matching the bank robber's description, as well as pictures of a gun and money. Now we're told that Arnett started, stayed off the radar until he was arrested yesterday in um, Dawsonville, Georgia. Now we do have calls into police there trying to figure out what led to his arrest there. We're told that he will be arraigned this morning on two counts of first degree robbery, as well as fleeing or evading police. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you very much. It sounds like that uh, case is solved. 537 now. Lexington police still looking for the men responsible for a violent robbery at a tobacco store. Police have issued an arrest warrant for 30 year old Darnell Thomas Jr. Surveillance video shows the robbery at Tobacco Zone on North Broadway on Friday night. One of the suspects put down his gun and the clerk grabbed it. That was followed by a scuffle and shots being fired. Police think one of the suspects may have been shot. The robber still got away with money. The clerk thinks this robbery is connected to a string of other robberies around Lexington. I actually watched and saw a couple pictures from the other robberies. Um, the same gun. It was the same gun that the police got. So I believe it's the same gun. Lexington police say they are looking into whether Thomas was involved in at least 15 other robberies, but they don't want to rule out any other suspects yet. Investigators now think they know what caused a fire at a Woodford County farm that killed six horses last week. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, firefighters think a water bucket heater started the fire at Chanticleer Farm. The fire destroyed two barns. Firefighters say it will be ruled as an accident. A Southern Kentucky man has died nearly a week after being stabbed. Williamsburg police say Sidney Satterfield died Monday. Police say his stepson, 42 year old William Keesling, stabbed him in the face head and chest last Tuesday at a home on George Hayes Road. Williamsburg police say Keesling's assault charges have now been upgraded to murder. Five people face counterfeiting charges this morning after Georgetown police found hundreds of copied movies. Police say they were being sold at a booth at the Georgetown flea market. A company that investigates counterfeiting complaints contacted police who collected the counterfeit movies over the weekend. Police think the suspects were charging customers a third of the price for those knockoff movies. If you're buying a brand new release movie for a price that seems too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, the packaging tends to be substandard. Uh, the print quality on the 
uh, movie or music cover tends to be substandard. Georgetown police arrested Albert Johnson, Michael and Violet Humphrey, and Teresa and Donald Perkins. All of them have been charged with unauthorized reproduction and distribution of recorded articles or devices for sale. A new state audit claims the Harlan County Sheriff's Office spent thousands of dollars improperly. The audit claims the office spent more than $27,000 on personal clothing, food, alcohol, and a subscription to a dating website. Investigators say it happened while former Sheriff Marvin Lipford was in office. He lost re-election last year. Auditors recommended Lipford repay the money. City leaders say the Lexington Government Center will be closed again today. Contractors are still working on restoring electricity there after an electrical fire. That fire started Sunday night in a nearby parking garage, but crews had to cut power to the entire building to make repairs. City employees will not have to report to work this morning if they work in the Government Center, but all other city offices will be open.